What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything you need to know about and what's going on here in our country on a daily basis. So President Biden just gave a speech here uh, yesterday, and I want to show you uh, an excerpt of it here. It was, it was a decently long speech here, uh, but I want to show you uh, somewhat towards the end of it here where he uh, kind of touched some hot buttons here, and I'll show you it here. You guys can let me know your thoughts here on it, uh, and then we will discuss it. So you guys can let me know your thoughts here on this, and then we will touch on it here. He talks about the Republicans potentially cutting Social Security and Medicare and programs like this. He also talks about the Republicans wanting to get rid of federal taxes and what they would do instead. So take a look at this here and let me know your thoughts on this and then we will discuss. Also, thanks so much for liking and sharing these videos. Here we go. Well, like many Americans, I was disappointed to see the very first bill that the House of House Republicans, and Nancy, you probably rolling over when you saw it, are bringing to the floor that would help the wealthy people and big corporations cheat on their taxes at the expense of ordinary middle-class taxpayers. You know, all these new IRS agents we have is because they fired a lot of them and a lot of retiring. And guess what? Who needs serious agents to know what they're doing and not doing? The billionaires, the multi multi millionaires. And according to nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, this one bill alone will add $114 billion to the deficit. This is their first bill. And they campaigned on inflation. They didn't say if elected, their plan was to make inflation worse. Plus, House Republicans introduced another bill on the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, blocking action that would help lower gasoline prices and help consumers. They're preparing to vote on a third bill. <clears throat> they want a national sales tax. Well, let me say this again. I know if I said that, it sounded like, what's Biden making up here? They want to raise tax the middle class by taxing thousands of everyday items from groceries, gasoline, clothing, cutting taxes for the wealthiest because they want to supplant the money lost from taxes on the millionaires and billionaires with a sales tax on virtually everything in the country. What in God's name is that all about other than what is obvious? They want working class folks to be paying another 10, 20 percent and their taxes, depending on where they live and how they're spending the money, and they're going to and reduce taxes for the super wealthy. Now, if we didn't see it, I think this we're making this stuff up. If I told you in 2023 a party was going to run on a national sales tax, well, that's how they're starting their new term, <clears throat> cutting taxes for billionaires. And by the way, the number of billionaires went up during the recession up. They didn't go down, they went up. Raising taxes on working families, making inflation work worse. Let me be clear. If any of these bills happen to reach my desk, I will veto them. <laughs> any of them. What I was saying during this last election cycle, this off-year election, this next thing, everybody said, you got to be making this up, Biden. Well, they're going to try to continue to try to cut Social Security or Medicare, which Americans have been paying into it with every single paycheck they've earned since they first got their first job when they were 16 years old. But if Republicans want to work together on real, that's what they, they want. To, they're going to argue that the thing is that for them to be sustained, you're going to have to change the way in which it works. Instead of putting more money in to guarantee Social Security, they're going to kind of cut Social Security cut Medicare. Look, if they want to work together on real solutions to lower inflation, create jobs, and build an economy, it works for everybody, I'm ready. One more thing. I don't want to hear a word from uh, the other side about my student debt relief plan. <clears throat> Let me tell you why I say that. It's going to help tens of millions of folks Folks on Pell Grants were hit financially because of the pandemic. 
Seventy percent of black college students receive Pell Grants. For many black students, the saving will be significant in my debt relief plan, including wiping out their student debt completely. That's a real game changer. And by the way, it will increase economic growth, not diminish it. But the other side is dead set against it. These are the same folks who didn't have any problem at all, any problem at all during the pandemic, to vote for and make sure they get these so-called pandemic relief loans. We all supported it. But guess what? A lot of these folks in the Congress, on the Republican side, were beneficiaries of these re debt relief loans to the tunes of tens of millions of dollars. Not individual. I think the highest individual one was a million two hundred or something. I didn't hear a word. I did not hear a word from them about they shouldn't be getting that relief. We didn't limit how much. We said if you had a loss and it was legitimate in business, then you get to wipe it away. And they're complaining about some kid being able to take away $20,000 in student debt that keeps him and his wife or his husband or her husband from being able to buy a home or start a business or just get going. Or these same folks are going after us. They're the ones who voted for the tax benefits of the wealthiest and biggest corporations that weren't paid for. The Trump tax cut was well over almost $2 trillion. Not a penny was paid for. So give me a break. Give me a break. Currently, the only thing blocking my plan is them suing us. My administration is making the case to the Supreme Court, and I'm confident. I'm confident in the legal authority to carry out our plan. You know me. I said you had my back. I said I'd have yours on this one and so much more. I have your back. We got to stand together. We got to stand together, including protecting a woman's right to choose. We have to continue to fight for racial justice. We got to cut black child poverty. We cut it in half in 2021 because of the child tax credit. We should be permanently cut it. Now, I need your help to make it permanent. I was pleased to see Democrats and Republicans work together to pass the Electoral Count Reform Act to protect the will of the people. Nancy, thank you for getting that done and a peaceful transfer of power. But we have to get the votes in Congress for the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act and the Freedom to Vote Act. That's why I went to Atlanta a year ago to make clear I, we cannot let the filibuster be an obstacle in protecting the sacred right to vote, period, if we get there. Let me close with this. Many of you have been working on these issues for a long time. Over the past two years, we've gotten an awful lot done together. We've got a lot done together. So let's keep it going. We have the most vibrant economy in the world right now, in the world. We're doing better than any other major nation in the world today. And that's what, that's what I thought about yesterday at Ebenezer and that inflection point in history we're at. The path is clear to go forward we need to go together. So let's be guided by Dr. King's light and by the charge of Scripture, which is, let us never grow weary in doing what is right. For if we do not give up, we will reap our harvest in due time. Well, we're going to reap the harvest. Let's remember who we are. We're the United States of America, and there is nothing beyond our capacity. Nothing, nothing, nothing if we do it together. So God bless you all. God bless the King family, and ladies and gentlemen, may God protect our troops. Thank you so very much. Wow. So President Biden speaking about a lot of different things there. You guys can let me know your thoughts here on this. Uh, where to even start? He talked about bringing the child tax credits back. He talked about the Republican plan. I don't even think I've talked about it yet. Uh, the Republicans have a bill or a plan to actually get rid of federal taxes. I'll show you a, a headline here on it. This is from a few days ago here. Republicans want to abolish the IRS. You know their, their vendetta against the IRS. Uh, how that would hit your wallet. So um, one Republican plan would completely get rid of the IRS. 
and would implement a higher national sales tax, the group of representatives known as the House Freedom Caucus are largely right-wing activists who are temperamentally opposed to compromise. They demanded promises from House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, extracting deals that suited their agenda while forcing an astonishing 15 separate votes in the House before finally electing Kevin McCarthy as Speaker in the early morning hours of January 7th. Among the concession was support, support for longtime conservative pet aspiration to implement a plan known as the Fair Tax Act. The act, which is generally expected to be shot down by Democratic Senate and White House, was introduced in the House of Representatives on January 10th. It's worth, however, taking a look at the provisions of the bill. Most strikingly, the Fair Tax Act, would intro, uh, introduced by Representative Buddy Carter, a Republican from Georgia, would seek to abolish the IRS. In doing so, it would replace the federal income tax with a national consumption tax, also known as a higher national sales tax. Quote, instead of adding 87,000 new agents to weaponize the IRS against small business owners and middle America, this bill would eliminate the need for the department entirely by simplifying the tax code with provisions that work for American people and encourage growth and innovation. Effects of this uh, legislation are ripe for debate. What this bill would effectively do would get rid of all federal taxes and instead institute a 23% national retail sales tax. Because one way or another, you have to pay for things like roads, bridges, firefighters, police, schools, school teachers, um, federal buildings, you know, Congress, all everything. I mean, think about all the things that run our country, um, the electric grid. I mean, everything, right? Just think about all the things that the the taxes pay for, the roads you drive on. I mean, the, 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 the army, the navy, the defense of our country. I mean, I can't even begin to even think of all the things that pet taxes pay for. Um, you can't just not have taxes. I know it, so it sounds like a good idea, right? But um, without taxes, the, the country would fall apart. You have to... You have to pay for these things. You have to have schools. You have to have fire. You have to have fire you know, department. You have to have police. You have to be able to pay. You have to have an electric grid. You have to have electricity. You have to have all these things, right? So what this would do, what this would do is essentially put a 23% national retail sales tax. Supporters of this measure say that it is similar to a 15% income tax plus a 7.65% payroll tax. But it's it's not, okay, it's just 23% national sales tax. Now, effectively, this would actually raise taxes on most lower and middle income people. The reason for this is, is because, I'll show you this here. Okay, here's two major headlines here. I'll start with, uh, yeah, this one. In 2020, so this was the last year of uh, former President Donald Trump's, uh, you know, year in uh, presidency. Sixty-one percent of Americans paid no federal income tax. Okay, so basically, if you were in the lower sixty-one percent of income earners, you probably paid no federal income tax. Federal income tax. Okay, uh, the reason for this is is because. Um, if you got a tax refund, you may have paid some, you may have paid some federal income tax throughout the year, but then if you got a federal income tax that was larger than what you paid, you may have effectively at the end of the year uh, ended up with a net zero. Also, if you got stimulus checks throughout the year, this tech, technically a tax refund on your your taxes. Okay, so that may have equaled out to zero on your federal income tax, or actually negative. Okay. 
Uh, so at the end of the year, 61% of Americans paid no federal income taxes in 2020. Because remember, stimulus checks and tax refunds, they're actually a refund on your taxes. Okay. Uh, in 2021, this is an article from 2022. So in 2021, 57% of U.S. households paid no federal income tax. So again, typically about the lower 57% of U.S. households paid no federal income tax last year. So uh, if you kind of look at this here, if everybody paid a 23% sales tax on everything you go to buy in the store, technically they'd be raising taxes on most people because every time you would go to buy. So remember, there's a sales tax. Well, you know, some states have no sales tax or lower sales tax, you know, maybe a few percent, maybe 5%. But if there was a 23% sales tax, they would definitely be raising taxes on a lot of people. But um, I don't, I don't know if this is going to pass. You know, this is something that, that some people have wanted for a while. But you guys can let me know your thoughts here in the comments. And I will keep you up to date here on everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. So if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe down below to our YouTube channel. It's completely free to do so. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, thanks so much for liking and sharing these videos. Here's some videos you can watch next. You can click here to watch my newest video next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.